Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Truett here doing day 11 in our distance learning packet for BCSD packet 2. And we are going to start with the problem 15 times 6. 15 times 6. So um, you might look at that problem and want to run away, but there are strategies we've learned in class that can help you with this. And one of them is a property called the distributive property. So we're going to use the distributive property as our strategy. Distributive property. Oh, these markers are kind of loud. All right, so for the distributive property, we are going to take 15 times 6. And I'm going to break apart the 15. I'm going to take the 15 and I'm going to break it apart. And two factors that we know really well that we can multiply by easily are 10 and 5. So 15 could be broken up into 10 times 6 plus 5 times 6. We could have broken apart the 6, but really we're going to look at this 15 because that is a two-digit number and we have not learned how to multiply past 12. So this is a way that you can multiply those larger numbers by breaking them into two different factors. So we would look at the 10 times 6, multiply that to get our answer and add that to the 5 times 6 once you multiply those together. Um, so this is a simple way to use a strategy and find 15 times 6. You can also use models or visuals. Jory's going to bring me my beans that I forgot. Um, so you can use, you could use manipulatives like um, the pinto beans I've used. I'm going to start though with um, tens and ones. So um, if I took the 15 times 6, and again, using the distributive property, I did 10 times 6 and added that to 5 times 6, I can have 10 groups of 6 or 6 groups of 10, and then um, 5 groups of 6 or 6 groups of 5. So normally we would make 10 groups of 6, but I think it would be easy to make 6 groups of, either way would be fine. We're going to do six groups of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's one group of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just using tally marks. Two groups of 10s. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Three groups of 10s of 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's four groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Five groups. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Six groups of 10. We already know how to count by our 10s. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay, six groups of five. Um, I could also just do the tally marks again to make it easy. One, two, three, four, five. That fifth one always goes across the, the first four. One, two, three, four, five. Two groups. One, two, three, four, five. Three groups. One, two, three, four, five. Four groups. One, two, three, four, five. Five groups. One, two, three, four, five, six groups. Then you would count by fives. And everyone should know 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right, if I was going to come up with a story problem, story problem, I could say um, that 15 students. went to the school carnival. Okay. They 
all won six prizes playing the carnival games. So then my question would be, how many prizes did they win all together? So I want you to think of a word problem, and of course this would be 15 students times 6 prizes each, and that would be what our answer turns out to be when we multiply 15 times 6. How do I know my answer is correct? Well, <clears throat> usually, um, like multiplication, you could do you could use a fact family to solve your problem. You could do a division sentence blank divided by 15 equals 6. That's one way you could solve it. You could check your work for a fa through a fact family. Um, you can check your work by Let's write that problem out again. 15 times 6 equals 10. Oopsie, times 6. I think I forgot to put those um, parentheses up in the top there. I will add those. And 5 times 6. So um, we've already done this work up there. But how do you know it's correct? How do you know that this work is correct? So you usually we, we check it by using a fact family. Just like when you add, you check your work by subtracting. Or when you subtract, you check your work through addition. So this is one way. See if that big number fits into this problem. Um, another, I was trying to show you another way here. You could just draw a picture to make sure that you understood, but you've already done models up here. So I think just using your division sentence. Write your answer here and decide if this sentence works and see if your work is correct. So using the distributive property, I did you the, the parentheses here. It's always parentheses um, breaking down one of those factors into two smaller factors and multiplying by the second factor. I could have done it if 15 was at the end, 15 would have been broken up into 10 and 5 here, and 6 would have been at the beginning. Okay, solve, figure out your answer, um, make equal groups or use models. The beans could work just as well. I could make groups of five until I get to six groups, and that's another way that you could solve this problem. Um, write a story problem. 15 students and six prizes each is what I chose. I'd like you to come up with your own problem and then solve the problem. Best way is using division. Plug in your answer you got for these three prob um, for these three strategies and see if it's correct. Okay. The way that you can see is that if it's correct, you would partition. So you'd have to see um, blank divided by 15. Does that equal six? Okay. So you know I would be putting some into each group. Would 15, could I make 15 groups of, of um, 6 or 6 groups of 15 to get to that big number? All right, boys and girls, I hope this helps you. Please let me know if you have any other questions down below. And um, the distributive property, I also posted another paper that shows you how to solve using the distributive property in our class story. I hope you have a wonderful day.